So our project is called House Block. This project is based in Clapton and this is in partnership with Hackney Council and this has been a part of a, a kind of ongoing conversation around housing, regeneration, um, housing strategy and policy and the potential of these kinds of systems to positively impact within the borough. We also have um, some of the future creatives from um, Waltham Forest's programme involved as well, which is really cool. The future creatives programme is something based in Walthamstow and it comes together to bring students um, of my age, of media, photography, architecture, creative, um, just to give us a space to come together and find the passion in what we do. It really came about through some conversations we had, in fact two summers ago, where we brought together um, people from different disciplines into conversation around housing and the potential for automation within that. And so a house block is really a prototypical house. It's a small house, you read it as a house, it has floors, it has a staircase, and I think that, that really, like Claire is saying, it really makes it tangible, like what it means to automate housing, how it looks like, so pe people can kind of visit and come and feel what it is and, and, and also kind of try to see and understand how the system works. Like they, they, they can think alongside us in understanding the potential of these systems. This uh, building is really unique in the sense that it consists of uh, only one single repeating building block. And the analogy that is the easiest to understand is that it's really a Lego. So it's really a modular part. It has no function. You can use it for anything. So it's not a column, it's not a floor slab. It's really just a building block that you can play with and that you can assemble. In a way, what the hour have done here is created a brick for the 21st century. It's still the same modular component, which in the past was used in you know, an infinite variety of ways. The only difference is that now this is making use of the very latest technology. And whereas bricks are actually inherently weak, these are really strong. And it also takes the, some of the concepts of post-tensioning of concrete, um, but without the high embodied energy. So it's a really nice sort of fusion of technology and sustainability. Ultimately, I think the interesting thing is that all these blocks are, you know, 90 degree, uh, very basic, simple blocks. But when it all comes together, it's almost a kind of organic structure, right? It's almost kind of like it's grown and, and it has many like unexpected corners that just come from purely the logic of putting these parts together. The fact that it is completely circular, you can take it apart. It changes the relationship also with land and land ownership. Like you could imagine uh, building an, an entire community, an entire housing block or a number of houses that maybe just exist for five years and then get taken apart again. And if you do that, you could actually build it at an extremely low cost and break this kind of, the, the, the fixed relationship with land that makes housing so expensive. So I think that's really exciting. I think that's also why it's really important to be doing these kinds of projects within communities as well. Um, we have guardians just over here, a whole street of people that we've been talking to down here. And that's really important to engage with them in these conversations and in this process and to understand their stories and their aspirations for different ways of living and the kind of potential that these kinds of systems do hold to enable that. At our labs we're essentially trying to develop an alternative platform for automated technologies which means that we're developing a kind of a toolkit so it's not just one technology but we're developing both the timber building blocks, you know, the kind of physical work, uh, and then a series of softwares that allow, uh, for example, um, non-architects to design with our system. So we've developed this combinatorial app, which is on the web, where people can very kind of quickly click blocks together and evaluate designs and design alongside us. It's also a way to communicate design intent and, and collaborate with larger groups of people. So it's really creating this kind of ecology of tools, some tools that are for specialist users and then some tools that are really almost games and that are very playful for um, people in the community or people working with us to, to engage with automation and to understand that it's not, not something alien and that we can you know, harness it and use it uh, for the better. And I think that's the purpose of the takeovers as well, is to start to really use the 
those kind of platforms and those both digitally but also in a very hands-on way. Studio Bark is an architecture practice based in East London uh, focusing on environmental design uh, we've also developed a modular construction system uh, for collaborative design. So the building centre asked if we could do a takeover of the R system. Um, we wanted to first of all create something, a place where people could sit and look at house block. Um, our first design was something kind of more of like a covered structure. Uh, but when we all arrived here, we just decided that we were going to completely scrap it. So we've just built a load of sofas instead. Coming here today, I heard that it was a sudden idea to make sofas for the takeover. And uh, I designed this and it was built with me, Danai, Mathilde, Harriet and Claire. And it has served its purpose and I hope it will continue to serve its purpose. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been renamed the Chesterfield <laughs> and it's now on wheels. Yeah. We were wondering how long could we make a bench um, and when you sort of see it uh, we've, we've got about seven meters or something uh, from from one end to another and that's all done because the blocks have this sort of post tensioning uh, strength to them. Uh, we also thought it'd be nice to experiment with these kind of different objects that different groups could sit in in a kind of COVID secure way. Um, we also have um, takeover scheduled with Gonzalo Hero uh, and The Good Thing, an artist called Lucene, who's looking at notions of family and exploring um, what family means and how we can rethink that through um, kind of digital installations and performance. We're also working with Studio Wayne McGregor as well um, and looking at how dance and performance can produce different readings of space. As a society, we've lost the skills of how to build. Um, it's something that uh, is alien to many people. In kind of generations gone past, you would have had many more people engaging in the process of construction. Um, and one of the things we've been saying recently is we're being told to build back better, but how can we do that when we don't know how to build? So uh, kits like ours have exactly they've, they've allowed more people to engage with the process all different stages from design construction and if people are able to participate and they're able to understand something then they're going to have firstly more ownership but also an understanding of how to be a good sort of steward or a good uh, custodian of, uh, of of the process and um, you know as mentioned if you're a consumer if you don't understand uh, then it doesn't really matter what it's built of, but once you're engaged in the process, then suddenly everything matters. What the details are, how easy is it to put together, and thinking about the people all the way along the process who have to build it, who have to lift it, who have to take it apart. So when you consider these things, then suddenly we create buildings which are sort of good for everyone and not just for the few.